whenever you're tasting a whiskey for the first time, you know, what I like to do is first I like to hold it up to the light. I like to start nodding my head very slowly, very <laughs> seriously. And I like to keep doing this until everyone around me kind of acknowledges that I am a serious whiskey expert and, uh, you know, my, my opinion should not be, should not be trifled with. <laughs> right, right. right. It, I could do that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Like, per, like yeah, a pro. Yeah. Uh, if I smack my lips, do I taste more? Uh, you certainly taste louder if you smack <laughs> your lips. Yeah. Loosen your waist belts, because we are here to eat. Cabu cooking. It's what's for dinner. Cabu Food Network. Um, anything else? Living in Wyoming, I came from a bourbon background. And as I transitioned to Scotch whiskey, I did find there was a bit of a learning curve. I think I first off say that as we get to know anything in the world, and certainly food and spirit, uh, there's just a learning curve, and you need to try a whole lot of things. Glenfiddich is a family-owned and operated distillery uh, dating back to 1887, and we are in the realm of single malt Scotch whiskey. So, single means it's all from one distillery. Malt means it's made all from malted barley and Scotch whiskey, which in Scotland is just whiskey. What could I look for in a label that would, you know, kind of help me understand, you know, what, what I'm buying? So, you know, for instance, on the bottle of whiskey, something that is almost universal across the world and is certainly true in Scotland is the age statement is one thing to look for. So that's a promise from the distiller that all the liquid in the bottle is at least as old as that. Obviously, you'll have the name of the distillery. Here, in this case, single malt Scotch whiskey, right, tells you the category. In this case, in particular, this is uh, the Glenfiddich, the 14-year bourbon barrel reserve, aged entirely in used American oak barrel, so ex-bourbon casks, and then it's finished in charred new American oak, so barrels that, that would become bourbon barrels if we didn't take them for this project. And that adds some additional, like, vanilla brown sugar notes to the whiskey. Mm -hmm. and, and it says it right there on the bottle. Honestly, there's, there's not a lot that you can tell about a whiskey by looking at it that you can't tell by, by nosing it and tasting it. So I like to spend a lot of time nosing the whiskey. It gives me an idea of what I'm probably about to taste and orchard fruit, maybe some summer fruit, um, definitely the vanilla brown sugar mm -hmm. that we talked about. Yeah, I smell that. I think, you know, a first sip to sort of acclimate my palate mm -hmm. and then a second to really pick apart the notes and you know one of the questions I'm asking myself is does the mouth follow the nose does it does it taste the way that it smelled in here and then from there just the, the, the finish okay um, so uh, one thing I like to do is the fancy term is uh, explore the retronasal which just means breathing out <laughs> I see the name of the distillery, but what, how does that does that kind of lead me to? Well, I guess I see you down here, Dufftown. You know, some people will know that Dufftown is in Speyside, but a lot of folks won't know that. Speyside has the most single malt Scotch whiskey distilleries. You've got the Lowlands, which typically is known for having a lighter style. The Highlands, which sometimes is considered to have a smoky style, but very light smoke. You've got Campbelltown, one of the old traditional distilling regions with a real kind of. Uh, I almost describe it as like a meaty uh, kind of kind of style, and then of course you've got Isla, which is where those real heavy peat bombs uh, originate from. A lot of the regional differences would relate back to that peat, which is different because the vegetation in each area sure, sure. is different, right? Like sure. in Isla, you've got that like iodiney peat. Right. Okay. Okay. I guess another thing that people struggle with sometimes is how to approach whiskey. Um, you know, when I first started drinking whiskey, I would put two little ice cubes in there. Some people say don't put water. Some people say drink it neat. Now, if I'm doing a formal tasting of, of different whiskeys, I am going to try them neat. Mm -hmm. I might put some water in there, but I'm, I'm not gonna put an ice cube in because as it cools it down, it can yeah. suppress some of the right. uh, flavors and aromas. And I'm gonna be using a, a Glen Cairn glass like this, which mm -hmm. is really nice at allowing the aromas to come up and concentrate in the glass. Okay. You know, before dinner, I might be drinking my whiskey on the rocks. I think it's kind of a nice aperitif style right, that way. Right. At the end of the day, you need to drink your whiskey in the way that you're going to enjoy it. Scotch whiskey is full of confusing terms, Alan. I'm gonna rattle off some, you shoot them back. Hit me. Angel share. The proportion of whiskey maturing in the cask that escapes to the angels through the air over time. 
dram. I've heard the dram described as a measure of whiskey acceptable to the person pouring the whiskey and the person receiving the whiskey. Hoggy. Ah, so hoggy is short for hogshead and it is an American oak barrel that's been rebuilt slightly larger and is one of my favorite vessels for aging single malt scotch whiskey. Butts. Butts, ah, so sherry butts, uh, another great vessel for aging single malt scotch whiskey. Would you say the butts are big? Uh, they're, they're all 500 liters. Bung. The bung is the piece of poplar wood that seals closed a whiskey cask. Where does the bung go? Goes in the bung hole, Nick. <laughs> Gets me every time. So one thing I want to share with you uh, before we conclude all of this is one of the newest uh, Glenfiddich expressions. This is the, the Glenfiddich Grand Cru. Oh, um, yes. It is a 23-year-old Glenfiddich, uh, and it is finished in fine French cuvee casks. Oh, wow. You know, the wine that was in there has left a lot of flavors behind, but the whiskey is going to pull out with its high alcohol strength, uh, which really adds just, I like to think, a touch of grace on the palate. Yeah, and just a great whiskey for celebration, so a perfect one for us <laughs> hey, to have here together. Hey, cheers. cheers, man. Thanks for coming to Lake Tahoe. Oh, thanks for having and me. And for educating us on the finer points that are whiskey.